God bless you today. This is a day in which the Lord God has made. And the word tells us to rejoice and be glad in it. And praise God. That's what I've decided to do. Aren't you? Don't you want to do that? Praise God. This God has made this special day for us. And today I would like to pray for you first before we get started and ask blessings on you. Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name for this another chance to proclaim your word. And Father, I just pray for the ones in the, in the video audience, Father, that are listening to this message today, Father, and I ask that you bless them and touch their hearts, Father, and draw them and woo them by your Holy Spirit, Lord, that the word may penetrate their hearts, Father, and they may reach out and receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to speak to you today on the word trust. I'm sure many of you know what the word trust means, but let's just go over it again and see what the dictionary says about it. The dictionary told me that the word trust means to rely on the integrity, the strength, and the ability, and the surety of a person, place, or thing. It's a confidence or an expectation. And you know, dear ones, when we put our trust in a person, when we put our trust in God, when we put our person, our, our trust even in a chair to sit down in to hold us, well, it's it's our confidence. It's our assurity, our trust that we know that God hears us and we know that a person, when we place our trust in that person, if it's our friend, then we have all confidence that friend is going to keep that trust and not let us down. And when we, even when we sit down, maybe to eat a meal, well, we are sure that that chair is going to hold us, aren't we? Don't we, don't we think that? I know I do. I, I haven't thought to, to look around at the chair and say, are you going to hold me when I sit down in you? No, I just feel confident that the chair is going to hold me. And dear, dear ones, that's what we must do when we ask the, for things from, from God in prayer. When we go to God in prayer, his word tells us that he hears us, that he's an all-seeing and an all-knowing and an all-caring God. So this is our hope and our prayer today that when we put our trust in a person, place, or thing, thing, they will not let us down. We will start off with trusting people first. How many of you watching this video would or could tell of an experience of a friend, a spouse, a relative, or even your children? Maybe you at one time, one of these have, have let you down. And we call it a violation of trust. How many of you would just raise your hands? Let's see. I think I see maybe five. Oh, I'm sure there's more of you out there that would just just agree to this that you have at one time experienced someone disappointing you. Well, this means, this trust means to break, if you break a trust or someone breaks that trust concerning you, it means an infringe. A law, like a law, a promise, uh, instructions, and etc. All this, one of these has been broken. In other words, go against their word or their promise that they made with you. Like some kind of a deal. But they chose to not keep their word or their promise. And dear friends, not only were you hurt or disappointed or even angry with them, and decided they could not be trusted anymore. We have heard of families driven apart by harsh words and unkept promises, misunderstandings that may have, have could have been resolved if we had only sit down and talked with each other. And first of all, the most important thing is we should have went to God with it and told God about it. He knew it already, but he says to come unto him, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And he promises us that he will give us rest. So that's the first thing we should do is go to God with it. And God understands. And he says when we do this, there is a solution of this broken trust which, which we have experienced. 
Trust is a precious thing, not to be used lightly. And we, as much as possible, need to respect one another and show the love of Christ in every situation we are in. As a Christian, God tells us in Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all in everything. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Just think of that. When we acknowledge God, he is directing our paths. People will let us down. Our relatives may let us down. Or our children may let us down. But we And we're going to be disappointed, but we don't give up. God remembers that we have tribulations, and he knows we live in a troubled world, and he knows we are tempted like the one who violated our trust in them, that we too can be tempted and do the same thing to them or to others, just like they did to us. The devil is like a roaring lion. Now, the Bible says he's like a roaring lion. He's not a lion, but he sounds like one. To us, when he comes against us, it sounds like a roaring lion, and it frightens us, doesn't it? And the Bible said he's seeking whom he may devour. But you know, dear ones, as God's children... Children of the Most High God, He cannot devour us, but He wants to threaten us and make us feel like He can devour us. In other words, get our minds off of Christ, and and He wants us to listen to Him and get all upset, get worried, get confused, and then He feels like He has us, but we're not to ever get our minds off Christ. Just remember, friends, that our relatives may let us down, people, our friends may let us down, our spouses may let us down, our children may let us down, but God will never let us down. And then God tells us and shows us when we come to him with this and when we choose to forgive the ones that have done this to us, then God tells us that we can handle every situation. You remember you remember when Peter and, and Jesus and the, uh, Peter and, and the rest of the disciples and Jesus was, uh, uh, was, was uh, handling the, the three loaves of fishes, the three loaves of bread and the two loaves of fishes when the disciples and Jesus had met and all the people, there were about 5,000 men and women and children. So that leads me to think they must have been about three. 15,000 in all because each one of them probably had a child and each one of them had a wife and so so anyway Jesus was going to feed all of these thousands of people so he told he told his disciples said have them sit down in the grass and then he took the three loaves of bread and the two fish and he raised his hands to heaven and he blessed them and then he distributed after he prayed and blessed them he distributed them to his disciples and told them to pass it around to all the people sitting on the grass. And then he told, after he did so, the people were fed. And then the, the Bible says they took up 12 baskets after all the people were fed. Isn't that wonderful? And then Jesus told his disciples, said, you go get in the boat and you go over to the other side, and I'm going to meet you there. But first, I'm going away by myself, and I'm going to pray, and then I will meet you there. Well, the disciples did get into the boat, and they did get out on the water. And when they were about an eighth of a mile out in the water, well, then they the, a big wind rose, and, and the sea got Deceit got boisterous and, and tempted us, and they they became afraid, and they they started getting afraid, and they started hollering. But Jesus had already knew this, and so he had already started walking on the water toward them. Well, Peter saw Jesus, and he said, "Lord, if it be you, there's a doubt." Then. Then let me get out of the boat and let me walk. Let me come to you. And Jesus said, 
raised that, lifted out his head. He said, come. And Peter stepped out of the boat and started walking on the water. But as he got just a little ways, he started, he started looking at the wind, started looking at the water. And he began to sink because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And he hollered, Lord, save me. And Jesus said, come. And Peter caught a hold of his hand. And Jesus said, why, why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. But Jesus was right there to help him. He's always there. He's always there to help us. Praise God. We, we can never get our eyes off of him. But when we do, he's always there. And of course, you know that they, they, they met Jesus. You know, they all went over to the other side and they cooked fish. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, the next trust we're going to talk about is we need to see ourselves as God sees us and trust ourselves. You may ask, Carolyn, is that possible? Can I really see myself as God sees me? The answer is yes. But most people go around beating themselves up all of the time, thinking they are so bad that God is disappointed in everything they do. Well, this is a time for an image change. You may ask, what is an image change? And, well, let's see what God says about you. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and 27, God says, Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, now, doesn't that tell you that God thinks highly of you to make man in his image, in the Holy Ghost image, and in uh, Jesus, the Father, and, and Jesus, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit? Doesn't that tell you that God loves you? And let them have dominion over all the earth, have authority over all the sea, the birds of the air, and etc. And God says, in the image of light, in the likeness and the image of God, God made man. So you can see here that God wants you to see yourself as He sees you. And when we don't know what or how God thinks about us, and we don't read His Word to find out, then we make ourselves miserable. And this is, I believe, I really believe this hurts God because God has given to us his all. He has sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world to be born of a virgin, to die on the cross for our sins, take a beating on his back for our healing, and give us an eternal life with him in heaven when we pass away. And in John 3.16, God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you are a whosoever, right? Yes, you are. We are all a whosoever. So you're the one that God was talking about. He knows all about you. He knew you even before he saved you. He's an all-knowing God. Nothing you can do will surprise God. He doesn't miss a thing. Sure, we all mess up once in a while. We may quarrel with our spouse or our children, our relatives or our friends. We may even utter these words, quote, I'll never forgive you or I hate you. The Lord tells us to guard our heart. He tells us to forgive the ones who has hurt us. Seven times 70. That adds up to 140 times in a day. So see, God knows that we are capable of forgiving 140 times in a day. Now, I don't think that we'll have that many chances in a day because a day is only 24 hours. But God knows that we're capable of doing it. You say, oh, I can't do that. 
They were the ones who did that to me. They hurt me. They did me wrong. But God still said it. So he knows we are capable of forgiving if we will only trust him and do it. He knows by doing so, this is healing for us to forgive. They may not deserve to be forgiven, but look what God has forgiven us from, our sins. Now, God, since God has forgiven us for our sins, surely we can forgive our loved ones for their sins against us. We can forgive them and we must do so. We have to make a choice to forgive. And then, as I believe as time goes on, I believe the hurt will diminish and will, will, will diminish even more so as time goes on. And the Lord knows this. And in Matthew 11, 28, he says again, to come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Praise the Lord. Our God is a God of comfort. Do you know? If you are a child of God, you are called righteous by God. You may ask, oh, no, not me. I'm just an old sinner. I lose my temper. I kick the cat. I punish my kids. I don't go to church every Sunday. I'm not outgoing enough to even teach a Sunday school class. I don't. Sing in the choir. No, I would never call myself righteous. That would be blasphemy. Well, God doesn't think so. Because here in Psalms 5, 12, he said, For thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and will favor will thou compass him as with a shield. God also tells us in Isaiah three ten, Quote, Say to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Are you seeing yourself different now? Are you, are you seeing yourself as God sees you? Oh, what love the Father has bestowed upon us, his children. He wants you and I to trust him and ourselves. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and God lives inside your body, which is his Holy Spirit, who come to live in you when you accepted his son, Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior and Lord. Hold your head high. You are a child of the King. You can talk to God just like you talk to your earthly father you don't have to use big words and try to impress god he knows our hearts and if you can't say what you want to say just cry help his ears are open to your cry this is what you as a christian who has received jesus christ has saved you And gave his son for you. He says. Now he wants you to be his witnesses. You know. What God said about trust. And now. You trust in God. You trust in your friends. And now. You need to trust yourself to be a witness. You may say. Sister what is a witness? Well a witness is something that you have seen. Heard. Or been a part of. This is what you as a Christian who has received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and has his Holy Spirit inside your body and has given you, God has given you his peace and his joy and you are happy and have the ability and the power to share with others what Christ has done for you and in your life. In other words, you are testifying to others what God has done for you. And this gives God glory. He tells us to be his witnesses. In Acts 1 and verse 8, God says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Your test, your territory to witness is where you 
are to your neighbor, your friends, or maybe even you see a baker on the street. He or she is one that really needs God, just as your neighbor does, and just as maybe a friend that doesn't know God. Maybe you would feel more comfortable starting right there. If, 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 if you could be the very one that God will use for a certain individual that only you can reach. Yes, that's right. There are people out there that only you can reach. You are unique. You are unique. Sorry, my computer wanted to go off. Praise God. We love it. We love you, God, and thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You're the only one that, some, that you can reach some people. You have a special ability. God gave it to you. Your Heavenly Father gave it to you to reach certain ones. You are special to God. He has equipped you with everything you need. In Psalms 139, God knew you before you were ever born. He saw you in your mother's womb. In verse 13, he said, the word says, for you did knit me together in my mother's womb. When God saved you, he didn't make no junk. He made a jewel and equipped you with everything you need. The enemy, the devil will try and stop you. That's his job. But you know, we have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And the word says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise God. You have the Holy Spirit in you and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You are special in God's eyes. You have received his son Jesus Christ into your heart. And when he looks at you, he sees Jesus. Reach out to others. You may be, you may say, I could never do that, Carolyn. We have all been guilty of thinking that someone else could do it, do a better job of witnessing to others than me. People wouldn't listen to me. My voice is not authoritative enough, and I am too nervous, and I would say the wrong thing. Then I would have to end up proving the whole Bible. I am not one to memorize scripture. I just can't remember any. And people would want to know how I would know that what the Bible says without, without my being able to show them what I had just said about God or Jesus. I just don't believe that God called me to try to, to, to tell others about the Bible. Gosh, oh gee, I didn't go to college. I just made passing grades in high school. So I don't have the education or enough confidence in myself to get in front of people. And explain things. I have always been timid about even getting up in school and giving a book report. <laughs> no, I'm sure God would could not use me, you might say. He has lots of people picked out to do his work. And I'm sure he understands why I can't. There are lots of people who are called out there to do this. I'm just not I'm just a housewife, a mom. And trying to understand the Bible for myself. Much less trying to teach others. Have you forgotten already that God, what God, what God telling you about you are the righteous? Look again to Isaiah 3.10 and to, and to Psalm 5.12. Let's read these, these scriptures again. In Isaiah 3.10, God tells you, Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their labors, their deeds. And in Psalms 5.12, Hallelujah. For you, Lord, will bless the righteous. Him who is upright and in right standing with God. As with a shield, you will surround him as with goodwill and pleasure and favor. Praise God. God also tells you in Philippians 14 that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Sometimes it helps to clarify ourselves, ourselves exactly who a witness is. Let's see. Let's say, for example, you saw an accident, a car accident, and one of the cars was traveling too fast and too close to the car in front of him. Okay, and ran right into him, 
smashing his car and hurting one of the passengers inside the other car. The police would be looking for a witness and you would qualify. Would you then unqualify yourself as an eyewitness to this accident and say to yourself that someone else could do better? No, you were the only one who saw it, so you would qualify. You need not have an education or be extra smart or even be a gifted person. Just tell what you saw, praise God. Hallelujah. I hope and pray that this has been an enlightenment to you. And I bless you now in the name of Jesus. And if you are someone out there who has not received Jesus Christ as your Lord, I would ask that you would listen to this prayer and say this prayer. Lord, I thank you that you have died on the cross for my sins. And Father, I come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, my personal Savior and Lord. And I ask you to come into my heart now, Father, and save my soul. Lord, I go by what your word says in Romans 10 and 9 and 10, that if I shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. And Father, I ask you now to come into my heart and receive me as your child. I believe that Jesus died on that cross for me. And I ask you now to, to take me into your arms and, and to come into my heart, Lord, to be my Lord and Savior. And I promise you, I will live for you forever and I will witness for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, dear ones. Until we meet again. Oh no.